Hi there, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of an Elders Majestic 120. So as we start the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your cassette toilet which opens with the key, Bedford key. Ensure that the blade on the bottom ball of the toilet is in the closed position and what you'll be able to do is lift and slide the cassette free of the vehicle. We've got a handle so when it's heavy you can drag it instead of carrying it to your waist disposal point which is beside your toilet block. Then you would take the cover off, press the orange button at the back and tip the contents of the cassette out. There'll be a tap there so you can put some water in, give it a rinse and tip out again. Then to put the chemical in, you just fill the cap full with the liquid chemical, pop it in and it's good to go back into the vehicle. Just before the wheel, you've got your wastewater outlet. So if you've put anything down a plug hole, it'll go in here along with your shower water, dishes water and hand basin water. So normally on the way out of your site you'd pull over the motorhome service bay and you'd open it up and you'd drain off your wastewater. It's very important in the winter that this is completely dry as well as you wouldn't want the water from freezing in the tank and cracking it and damaging the pipework. We've got an external TV point so if you're on a super pitch you can get a length of coax and connect to their aerial. But you do have an aerial on the vehicle yourself. So it's more on your hard to reach signal pitches. Fresh water intake, so using the round headed key. So you've got three of them, one does the habitation door, one does the toilet and one does the water. Get your hose pipe, put your hose pipe in there. Fill it until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main 12 volt control panel. But carry your hose pipe with you with some hose pipe connections because it's mainly just a brass tap on site. And below you've got a blue tap, so very similar to the grey tap. This is fresh water drain off. So if you've taken on contaminated water, you're not using the vehicle for a while or you're winterizing, you'll want to open it and let the fresh water out. And especially in the winter, as you wouldn't want the tank to freeze. Using the square key, this is your battery locker, so this is where the location of your leisure battery is and your hookup point. So to hook the vehicle up with mains power, you get your hookup lead, Lift the collar, expose the ends, and slide it on to the hookup point. Put the wire behind the door, and then hook the sight up, as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead. And then what you can do is you can lock it back up, and that's the hookup lead secure. When heating your water on gas, it's very important that this cover comes off, but when you're traveling or when you're heating it on electric, it can stay on, and when you're washing the vehicle, we'll always advise you to put it on. But to take it off when heating the water on gas, hand on the top, thumb in the middle, peel it off. Then you can pop this in the cab, and then when you're doing your checks before you leave your site, you just pop this back on. But we'll leave this off for now, as we'll show you how your water heats on gas. Come round the back of the van, you've got your high level brake light, your reverse camera, and then these points are if you wanted a bike rack fitted, they would go on the big bars above the window. On the passenger side of the vehicle, you've got your LPG, so this is your liquid petroleum gas locker. So you'd fit two bottles in here, two six kilograms, and it runs off propane, which is the ready orange bottles. You'd tie the bottle in once you get it on board. So just Tie it in, stop it moving when you're on the road. And then to connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread, so no need for a spanner, just hand tighten it. Opposite threads with it being gas, left to tighten, right to loosen, and then you turn on and off from the top of the bottle. Always ensure that it's turned off before you start traveling, and you do have 
space for a spare bottle so you can carry two six kilogram propanes in that locker. External gas point, so if you want to use a Kadok or an external barbecue, you get a fitting which is called a quick connection fitting that fits in here. Then you'd need some Jubilee clips and some gas hosing to connect from the quick release connection to the barbecue or Kadak and then you turn the tap on and that will use the main gas on board instead of carrying a spare. Put your awning, that, that's your, right, your microwave vent, your awning light and then you've got this safety handle. So when you're not using the vehicle you can use it as added security as it goes over the door and you can lock it with the small black key or you can use it as a aid to get in and out of the vehicle. You've got your electric step. So that'll come out by that switch and it'll retract when the engine has started. Your diesel fillers on the passenger door which opens with the Fiat ignition key. Tire pressures are on the passenger door slam panel. So you've got five bar on the front which is 72.3 psi and five and a half on the back which is 79.5. Toolkit which includes a jack and a brace, a torn eye, engine batteries underneath the floor, and your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So you've got all your fluids to the left screen wash, power steering fluid, brake fluid, coolant, engine oil, dipstick for your oil to check the levels, weight plates, so 3.3 3 ton. But then it gives you your, your mass in running order, which is your which is 3.3, .3, that's your gross vehicle weight. And your mass in running order is 2.660. So 2,660 kilograms is what it weighs empty, and 3,300 is what it weighs full. Paint code. And then if you ever needed to jump start the vehicle, you've got nerf by the headlight, which is the passenger headlight. And underneath this cover is the positive because the battery is underneath the cab floor. Inside the vehicle, this is your main 12 volt control panel. So starting off with the switch at the bottom, you've got your master switch. This will turn the vehicle on and off. 12 volt if you're not hooked up or if you are, it will be 240 volts. So you would switch that on. Then you've got your awning, which is your awning light on the outside of the vehicle. You've got your pump. So you'd use your pump to pressurise the water for your taps, toilet and shower but make sure that you've got water on board otherwise if you don't you can burn the element out on the pump. You've got your lights which are the inside interior lights which are all then individually switched so you turn them on and off here and then press the switches to turn the lights you want on and off. At the top here it's showing you the voltage of your leisure battery and if you click this button here it'll show you how much water you've got in underneath so you've got just under a half a tank of fresh water on board at the moment and then you've got aux so aux is your leisure battery offs in the middle and vehicle batteries at the bottom so we always advise you to run it off the leisure battery as you wouldn't want to flatten your vehicle battery so aux is your leisure battery in the kitchen area so you've got Three gas rings, one electric, which indicates where the red light at the back, but that'll only work when you're on mains 240 volt when you're hooked up. And then below, you've got a grill and an oven. And underneath here is where you'll find the locations of your gas taps. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. Any problems for you with the gas, I'd always advise turning the bottle off to be safe. You've got a fuse spur here for your electric hot plate, so if any problems with that you can just turn the switch off. Above you've got a microwave, which the fuse spur for that's in there so you can turn it off and on. And you've got your plates and your cup rack. You've got your various storage drawers and a small cupboard at the bottom but this is your fridge so you've got a fridge with a freezer compartment when winterizing or when not using the vehicle for a while it's very important that you especially with the fridge 
that you clean your fridge out and then you leave the door open ajar and to do so there's a little lug here push these two pins will come out and that'll stop the door from shutting on itself and air circulation will go in and out the fridge to stop mold and bacteria growing in the fridge but to operate it this is the energy selection button so you've got off at the top so 12 o'clock is off at three o'clock you do have your mains hook up so if you're hooked up and you are pre-chilling the van at home or you were on site you'd put on hook up you've got a battery setting at four o'clock which is a 12 volt feed from when the engine is running it's not your leisure battery so don't expect to put this on and ask why your fridge isn't getting cold it is only when the engine's running and it acts like a cool box so it's got to be pre-chilled beforehand so if you've pre-chilled it at home and your shopping's nice and chilled then when you come to drive to your site you can put on battery or if you've been to one site and you're making a trip to the next you can put on a battery if you were well camping you turn down to six o'clock which is the gas flame this is your gas indicator so that orange band needs to go into the green and then what you would do is this is your temperature so you push your temperature in push your sparker in and then wait for that orange band to start moving into the green and once it's in the green you would let go and that would be lit on gas but you'd only use gas if you were while camping if you've paid your side fees you use their electric because you don't want to waste your gas at the back you have your back lounge with storage above so press and you can release the doors in this one you have your solar charger unit so it's telling you that 13.6 volts is what your leisure battery is currently reading so you can view that it'll tell you what amperage is coming in off the panel by just pressing the buttons you'll be able to have a look through there you've got storage at the top storage for your bits and pieces but you can put your telly on here on the bracket and next to it you have all of these controls so starting off with the top one this one is your energy selection of how you are heating the vehicle as it's a space heater. So off is on the O. Then you've got one wiggly line, which is one kilowatt of mains power. Two wiggly lines, which is two kilowatts of mains power when hooked up. And then you've got three kilowatts. So if you're on a site, you've paid your site fees. Again, you'll not want to waste your gas. So use their electric so normally you would use it on depending on what the site amperage they give you so on the company caravan and club sites the big sites you'll be able to use two or three kilowatts but on smaller cl sites and abroad you may have to use one then if you go back to off you've got the fans on its own so if it if the vehicle is hot enough and you just want to circulate that warm heat you can just put the fan on or you can go all the way down the bottom and you can use gas which you would use if you were wild camping. Then you have your temperature on the right hand dial. So all the way at the top is 30 degrees. In the middle here is about 15 degrees. Underneath you've got your ultra store. So your ultra store stores water. So this is your gas, this is the electric switch. The gas is when the cover on the outside on the driver's side must come off. So you've got off in the middle, 50 degrees at the top or 70 degrees at the bottom of heating your water on gas so determined on you can pick which temperature you want of the water normally it's 50 degrees for doing your dishes and 70 for showering and then you've got your electric side so you've got off in the middle one kilowatt at the top to heat your water or two kilowatts at the bottom and again with the water if you are in desperate need of water you can have the gas and electric on together which both sources together Will reduce the time it takes to heat the water you've got a 240 volt socket a 12 volt and a telepoint and aerial point for your tv 
which then your telly would connect onto there. But we we'll always recommend 12 volt tellies because if you're wild camping, you'll be able to use them. Whereas if you weren't, you'll only be able to use 12 volt appliances and 240 volt telly wouldn't work without a hookup. In the back lounge on the left hand side is the location of your boiler. So your boiler does two jobs, obviously heats the vehicle and heats the water. So this boiler holds 10 litres of water. In the winter it's very important that you drain the water off. Otherwise, if you don't, it could freeze when temperatures drop. And if it does freeze, it's very expensive to replace this and it isn't covered under warranty. So if you look down between, that's the boiler, that's the pump, and then this yellow toggle tap, which is a double jointed tap, so it's on its side, it'll go either way. You need to stand it up on end. So you'd, you'd come in after you've opened the fresh and the waste outside without the pump on because that's the pump kicking in so if the pump was to be turned off what you'll be able to do is lift the tap 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the chassis leaving that tap stood up when the vehicle is not in use you then open all your taps within the vehicle take your shower head off your shower hose and lie that in the shower tray and then when you come to reuse the vehicle shut the taps outside shut the taps inside shut the boiler fill the vehicle with water via a hose pipe turn the panel on turn the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get a pressurized flow of cold water straight away because it's transferring it from the tank underneath the van via the pump to the cold tap go to the hot side It'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises and all that's doing is it's transferring the water from the main tank into here, pushing the air out until, until the container fills with 10 litres of water in the boiler. Then you'll get a free flow of water from the hot side. This is when you know that your system is then primed. But please drain these off because in the winter if you don't, they can be a very costly mistake to make and your warranty doesn't cover it. At the back in the middle, of the lounge this is your fuse board so you've got all your 240 volt appliances and you've got all your 12 volt fuses so 12 volt fuses i would carry some spares just in case anything does blow a fuse you can replenish it and then if you trip it out with a mains 240 volt item try here before you try your main site and then to make the bed release the turnbuckle pull the lat system out You'll get so far and it'll stop on these two stoppers. Lift the board up and put it down on the other side. Then what you need to do is lift this cushion out and then you'd use your backrests from either side into there, squeeze them in, and there you have a large double bed across the width of the back end of the vehicle. In the wardrobe is where you'll find the location of your TV aerial. So you've got your Vision Plus booster at the back so you can boost and weaken the signal should it be too strong or too weak on the back there. And then with the aerial, if you are struggling, you would release the nut here. So push the stem up and then use the little toggle to direct the aerial. But look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing, that's the best advice I can give you. And point yours in a similar direction and you should get a good enough signal without messing on for too long. But then when you start to travel, before travelling, always pull it in and tighten the nut so that the aerial doesn't catch the wind and be ripped off the roof of the vehicle. So in the washroom, to operate the toilet, Make sure the pump's on, you'll be able to press the blue button at the back, which is your flush. So as you can see there, you can flush the toilet. Always flush the toilet first to lubricate the seal and keep the blade clean. And then to open the blade, slide this to the, the grey lever to the right. Use the toilet with the blade open. Then flush after use and slide this back to the left. 
and when that's slid back to the left you'll be able to get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle should that be open that's why you can't get the cassette out and then what you can do is you can swing the toilet round so that you can get more space to get your legs in in the shower tray you've got a toilet roll holder a turnbuckle here which holds the shower screen back and behind there you do have your shower head so like I've said if you undo it from the pipe because the pipe's gonna loop in there and lie that in the shower tray stop any water from re freezing in there you've got toilet cabinet and then you do have your fold out sink To lock your habitation door you just press this in and that's it locked when it's flush go for the handle and the door will open with a fly screen on there keep the midges out in the summer and then now in the cab to black the cab out on an evening you have curtains on either side so they'll pull round you've got your handbrake to your right electric windows driver and passenger and electric mirror adjustment and there's two mirrors on each side so the top one and the bottom one to adjust got your headlight adjustment your trip computer so you can go through your range your distance your average and instant consumption your average speed your average traveling time you've got your lights and the indicators all your steering wheel controls here for the radio and volume and then the bottom stokes cruise control so if you're on the motorway you can pop the cruise control on, so turn it on, you'll get the little green light and it'll say cruise control on. Get your desired speed by accelerating using the pedal and then just push it up. It'll keep that speed that you've had with the pedal. And then you can push up to speed up or pull down to slow down. Cancel with the foot brake or cancel with the end of the stalk and then push up to reset. Six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar into reverse and it'll bring on your rear view camera. Locks and unlocks the cab on an evening if you want to be locked in. Hazards, rear fog lights and heated mirrors, 12 volt points. Temperature is on the left hand ring and then on the inside is your fan speed. Must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work. And then on the right hand you've got your distribution, so face, feet, screen, wherever you want the air to go to. And then whether you're bringing fresh air in or you're recirculating air within the vehicle. FM, AM, radio, press 1 to 6 to save your favourite channels. Media is... CD. Or USB, which is at the back of this glove box, which is lockable via the key got a glove box here and a heated and cooled glove box via the air conditioning on the top so if you've got bits and pieces to keep in there like chocolate sweets in the summer when the air cons on that's a great place to keep them to keep you entertained when on your journey to your site instead of getting up and down to the fridge